Um, rest is a holy act before God. It honors God. Rest is a necessity, but not a luxury. But if you do not rest, it affects your mental health. In this current day and age, we're so busy toiling and working so hard, which is not a bad thing. Um, we're working so hard, sometimes we forget to rest. Sometimes we look after others much more than we look after ourselves. And that is, at, at, to a certain extent, that's good because you're showing sacrificial love. But sometimes you don't understand that if you don't look after yourself, you might be doing more damage to the other person because they'll lose you faster, right? You'll be gone faster. If you take care of yourself, you're taking care of other people as well. So I'm trying to get in uh, to speak about um, be sure that you rest also in God because this act is honoring God. This is actually one of the commandments if you haven't heard. And I'm going to read it really quickly to you. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, either you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals nor any foreigner residing in the towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Amen? So God set a model before us from the very beginning of the world on how to behave or act. He did it in creation. He commanded to us in the Ten Commandments. Even the land has a Sabbath. Have you all heard of that? The land Sabbath. Every seven years, you're supposed to not but work on the land. You guys know that? No. Every seven years, you give rest to the land. So, God incorporated this into our lives for a reason. So first, I'd like to talk about three things, uh, three different types of rest. And I'm going to focus more on mental rest and physical rest. But I wanted to add, uh, at the beginning, spiritual rest. God did everything uh, necessary for the work of salvation. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God wants you to abide in Him and rest in Him. Because if you rest in Him, then whatever happens around you, you're not going to be worried about it. You remember when Jesus was, uh, like Jesus was in, in the storm, He was sleeping, right? Just like that, if we trust in God, we'll be able to go through the storm. But God will be, be with us, and we'll be able to trust in God. Mental rest. In chapter, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Sometimes in our mind, we keep going over negative thoughts. Satan likes to give us negative thoughts in our mind to continue to think about over and over again. But calls, God calls us to think about good things, positive things, right? He wants us to think about things that are true, things that are noble, whatever is right. If you think, keep thinking about the negative, it just wears you down, it tires you down. But God wants you to think about the positive, because that's what you're called to do. Your mental health is tied to the things you think about. If you keep thinking about negative things, you know what? You're going to become a negative person. If you think about positive things, you become a positive person. God wants you to trust in God. Trust in Him because there are situations you can't have control over anything. You, like we're saying today, we're trusting in Him, right? We can't have control over everything. Sometimes people like to be control freaks and have hands in everything and control everything. But truly you can't. God is the one. He's sovereign over everything. He gives you the peace that passes all understanding. The next thing. Your spiritual rest informs your mental rest, which then goes to your physical rest. If you don't have, if you do not have a good spirit or a, or a good mental rest, you won't have physical rest. You keep thinking about things that uh, bring you down. You can't have physical rest. If you have good mental and spiritual rest, you'll be sleeping like this baby here. Your spiritual and mental rest affect your physical rest. You need to sleep. Some of you guys don't sleep enough. Some of you guys don't. 
eat enough. You need to take care of yourself. God gave you this temple to take care of. So be sure to take care of it. When you lose sleep, when you do not eat, you lose focus. You may have mental illnesses, depression, right? God calls you to take care of your body. The Sabbath is supposed to be a blessing for man, not a burden. Now, I'd like to point out some examples from the Bible. Um, Elijah, um, and this is in 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, I believe, that he says he, he just finished performing this miracle where he called fire down to burn up. Uh, and he was challenging the other guys to see who can bring fire down from heaven, right? Right after this miracle, he heard that Jezebel was coming for him. And then all of a sudden, he says, take my life. He talks to God and says, take my life. I know better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the brush and fell asleep. But God said, get up and eat. He looked around and everybody's head was some bread, baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then laid down again. And then a second time, God called him to what? Eat. He slept and he rested. So my point is that Elijah, he was worn down, but God called him. He ate something, took a nap, ate again, and God strengthened him. It's as simple as that. Don't read much into it. God calls us to rest. The next example is Jesus, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and we all know the story that he was going through the storm. Um, in Mark chapter 4, 35 to 38, the day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, he took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern doing what? Sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus was sleeping through the storm. Why? God calls us to trust in Him. When we trust in Him, we won't be worried about all the things that are around us. When we abide in God, we're not worried about things that are happening around us. We trust solely in Christ. He will take care of everything for you. Now, I'm not telling you to be lazy. Go and watch TV and rest like that. I'm telling you, rest in God. Rest in God. So Sabbath was made to be a blessing for man, not a curse. The Pharisees made it to be legalistic. And they're saying, oh, you can't pick that on the Sabbath or that. God made it to be a blessing for men. Take this. You allow the trust to be in God. And back to what I was talking about earlier, the land of Sabbath. He talks about to Israel for 490 plus years ignored the land of Sabbath. They did not allow the land to rest. And eventually, what happened? They were in exile for 70 years. And God made up those years, that every year, each 70 years, He made the land rest for 70 years. So God keeps account of your rest. God commanded it. It is a sin if you don't rest. Take care of your body. And that's what God calls you to do. And I wanted to point you some other uh, resources. So Michael Todd, one of my favorite people to listen to, he also has a message about rest, and I said you suggest you listen to him. Robert Morris, he talks about the principle of rest, and I suggest you listen to him. The enemy comes when you're tired. The enemy doesn't come when you're all hyped up and you're super ready to go. Right? When you're tired, when you're sleeping. Not when you're sleeping, when you're, when you're so tired that you can't bear it anymore. That's when he comes. Don't let him catch you slipping. Be ready, be strong always, and rest in God. That's all I got. Thank you. I just want to say a word before the worship team comes and uh, let's worship in evening to the Lord. And uh, what a wonderful message that uh, Tim talked to us. Rest in the Lord. That is very important for each one of us. Sometimes we cannot as human beings, but learn to do it. Let's try it at times. We all are busy in so many different ways, but our mind needs rest, our body needs rest, our life in all needs rest. So let's practice it at least sometime. 
things come against us, bother us, but trust in the Lord like Tim said. Let's bow our head before the Lord and ask the Lord to help us to do that in a practical way. Father God, we thank you for the short message that Tim gave to us this morning. You have established Sabbath for the people to rest and thank you for the principle that you taught us. Help us to rest in thee. When, you, when we come to worship you, we take time to rest. Even though we worship God physically and using our tongues and our body to worship you, help our mind to rest in you and trust in you and rely on you. Whatever comes against us, whatever the way the enemy comes against us, let us help in our rest and trust in you and strengthen in our spirit and soul and be rejuvenated. We thank you for all of the young people. Continue to have your blessing upon them. Use the mighty in the days to come to worship Lord. Thank you for the worship team. Use the mighty to sing for the Lord. Raise up our young people to speak for God in this generation. We thank you. Thank you for speaking in different ways to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.